Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we've got the TRX4 out again, so you can add a bit more weight to the front axle. Last time we replaced the outer portal covers with those rather nice MFR brass ones. This week we've got a pair of KYX inners. They don't look quite as nice as the MFR outers, but they do appear to have all the holes in the right places. In the packet you get two hubs of course, as well as quite a few fixings. There's some M2.5 and M3 screws, a couple of nylocks and some rather thick washers. Looking more closely at the hubs, the general quality looks fine. The edges of the tapped holes are slightly raised with a small burr. It probably won't matter that much here, but on a larger scale, burrs like that can stop the parts from sitting flush, causing a misalignment of the bearings, and if it's really bad, the parts can fail. The only other small issue is if we have both the hubs with the arms facing forwards, the L and R are backwards. The side on the TRX4 nearest the camera has the R stamped on all the stock parts. We could leave them as they are, as I'm pretty sure they'll still fit, or we can flip the arms over as they're just screwed on. If you end up wanting a set, you can get them in the UK from Green's Models. If you've got a TRX4, he stocks quite a good range of shiny bits, so it's well worth a look. If you don't want to order from a UK shop, there's a few stockists on AliExpress, but it's worth noting most of them end up costing more or less the same as Green's, just with a two-week shipping time rather than next day. Right then, let's see about getting them fitted. First the body comes off for access, we can flip the chassis over, wheels off, and we've got access to the hubs. They're really simple to remove, there's three points that attach them. From this side we can remove the bottom kingpin screw, there's a small steel tube that sits in there too, so keep an eye out just in case it tries to roll away. From the top we need to remove the screw that holds the ball end on. It's just tapped into the plastic so there's no nut to worry about. And lastly there's the top kingpin. With the three screws removed we can carefully pull the hub from the axle. The drive shaft should slide nicely straight out. And there's one of the metal tubes trying to escape. They'd be really easy to lose if you're not careful. And there we have one hub. I'll do the other side off camera as it's exactly the same, just the drive shaft is a bit longer. Before you see the hub again, it'll have had a little bit of a wash and clean up as we don't want to get any of that sandy dirt in the gears. It's better to be safe than grouchy. Before we start taking the hubs apart, we need to start sorting out all the screws. There's no instruction sheet with the brass bits, so we'll have to work it out as we go. From what we've already taken apart, we've got the two screws that attach the ball ends. The longer one is the side with the linkage to the steering servo. There's the four kingpin screws and the four metal tubes. And next we can sort out the bag of bits that comes with the hubs. We've got eight black M2.5 cap heads, a long silver M3 dome head, six very short M2.5 cap heads, eight silver M2.5 cap heads, a single M3 silver cap head, two M3 nylon nuts and six thick washers. The hubs themselves are very easy to take apart. To get the drive shaft out, all we do is remove the three very short M2.5 button heads that hold the large bearing in. Then carefully pull the drive shaft until it pops out along with the small gear. And it's probably worth noting, it's usually not a great idea to remove a bearing like this. We are after all pulling it out by the inner race, putting all the force through side loading the balls. However, there's very little force required, so we're going to get away with it. If we still had the plastic outer cover, we'd need to remove the hex now. But as we've already fitted the MFR cover, we don't need to remove the bearing and the larger gear. Keeping the hex on means nothing can fall out when we take the cover off. To take said cover off, all we do is crack all the screws, then take them out one by one. So we've now got eight more M2.5 cap heads in the stockpile. Next we can separate the brass cover and the plastic inner. They might need some jiggling to get them apart, but don't be tempted to stick a screwdriver in there and pry them. Just jiggle until they separate. If the remaining bearing in the plastic hub doesn't come out by itself, you'll need to fish it out. It's not a tight fit, so it's easy enough to lift out with whatever tools you have handy. It's quite greasy, so we don't really want to handle it. So drop it straight onto the stub on the larger gear on the outer cover so it's ready to go back together. Now, I've got a feeling that once the brass inner and outer are put together, they're not going to be easy to get apart again. 
So while we've got easy access to the gears, I'm going to add some fresh general purpose grease. It's similar to the brown stuff that Tamiya tend to give you. It's fairly thin, so it's not going to cause too much drag, but it will keep things slippery in there. Using a cocktail stick, we can apply a few blobs between the teeth of the big gear. When it gets spun up for the first time, it'll get evened out very quickly, throwing all the excess off onto the walls of the hub. And while we've got the grease out, we'll apply a little bit around the lip. This will help stop the two brass parts catching when they go together. It'll also help seal up any gaps and stop the water getting in. And importantly, when we come to taking it apart in the future, it will make life a lot easier. Now, because we've got all metal parts, we're going to need to use a little blue thread lock, just to stop the screws vibrating loose. Just like with the grease, we can use a cocktail stick to apply it. We only need a tiny amount in the holes with the threads. Just get the end of the stick wet, then stir it around in the hole to spread it around. There's two holes on the inner part and six on the outer to do. It can be quite tempting just to try and press the two parts together now, and you might just manage it, but there's a good chance they won't quite sit straight, causing them to catch and jam. A much better way of putting them together is to use the screws. Gently hold the parts together and loosely start fitting all the screws. The idea is to have them so they're just bottomed out, but they're not really pulling the parts together. For the screws themselves, we're going to need four of the long M2.5s that came with the hub for the metal holes, two of the stock Traxxas M2.5s on the two bottom holes, and two of the silver M2.5s on the top holes on the outside. It does sound like a bit of a hodgepodge of fixings, but after some trial and error, this combination worked the best with the hole depths and the screw lengths. When they're all in but not tight, we can start working our way around in the classic cross pattern. If you want to know more, look up head bolt tightening on Google. The idea is to do up each screw a little bit at a time from one side to the other. It should pull the two parts together, keeping them fairly parallel until they're nicely seated. When they're together, give each screw a little extra nip and you should have a good solid lump of a portal hub. There's one more thing to do before we put the drive shaft in. So we have the L and the R hubs on the right sides, we need to flip the arms over. They're only held in with two screws, but they're ridiculously tight and they seem to have been glued in. With a proper Allen key, you can get enough torque on them to crack the glue. If you've got screwdriver handles, you might just struggle a bit, but they will come away. After the glue is cracked, they do undo quite easily. Interestingly, whatever the glue is, it's still slightly tacky. Strange stuff. All we do now is flip the arm over and refit the two screws, making sure they're done up nice and tight. I think with the remains of the glue, we're not going to need any extra thread lock in there. It's so gummy, they're really not going to go anywhere. OK, now we can pop the small gear and the drive shaft in. As long as the bearings are kept straight, it'll slide straight in without much force. To stop it falling out, just like the stock plastic part, we use three short screws. Unfortunately, the screw heads don't quite reach the edge of the bearing, so we have to use the provided washers under the screw heads. I'm going to use the Traxxas dome heads here, as I think we might be running into some clearance issues later. And of course, a little bit of thread lock won't hurt too. To fit the hubs to the axles, all we do is pass the drive shaft through the small hole until it stops. Then turn the hex while gently pressing it in until it drops into the diff. Now we can line up the hub with the holes in the C-hub and insert one of the metal tubes followed by one of the Traxxas kingpin screws we removed earlier. Now this does reveal another little issue. Even with the screws fully tightened, it still sticks out quite a bit. We might be able to pack it with some washers, but it's going to be better with a shorter screw. The Traxxas one appears to be an M3 by 12, so an M3 by 10 should do the trick. I've only got a regular cap head rather than a dome, but I do think it's going to fit. When I was doing up the longer screws, I could feel it very gradually getting tighter, which usually means the thread isn't fully cut to the bottom of the hole, so it could be they only tapped with a second and never used a bottom tap to finish the job. Before we install the rest of the screws and thread lock everything, we should do a quick check to make sure everything's going to clear the wheels. We'll just hold a wheel up to the hex so we can check them. Well, the cap head kingpins are miles away from the wheels, and there's plenty of clearance around the brass bits too, so there's no worries there. OK, we can take the M3x10s out again, making sure not to lose the metal tubes, and apply a little bit of thread lock in the threaded holes. This time, we really don't want any to get up into the moving parts, so we're going to wipe it with a paper towel to absorb what's near the edge. There's still going to be plenty left just inside the hole, so the screws lock in place. 
reinstall the screws. Now they don't need to be super tight, just done up plus an extra little nip is all they need. They're only clamping the metal tube down to the hub and once the thread lock's dry they're not going to be going anywhere. With both the hubs built up and fitted we can move on to the steering linkage. We want the linkage that goes off to the servo on the top of the arm on the right hand hub and under it we want the drag link. For the screws we're going to use the Traxxas ones. It's the same size as the ones from the hub parts but black rather than silver. It'll just drop through the two ball ends and the arm and we fit one of the nylock nuts on the end. Just do it up until it bottoms out. Everything's metal so it's going to stop very abruptly when it's all snug. On the other side we've only got the drag link ball end so it goes under the arm and we use a Traxxas screw and the other nylock to hold it in place. So that's the install complete, all that remains is to give it a quick test. I've popped a battery in and turned on the system, so let's see how it goes. Well, the basic steering seems to be working nice and smoothly, however the screws and washers holding the bearings in are indeed causing some binding and lock reduction. If we take a closer look you can see the frontmost screw colliding with the C-hub. That's not really ideal. There's a few things we can try to fix it, but it is going to require some parts ordering. The first might just be a case of fitting a standard steel washer. I've got one here, and you can see it's about half the thickness of the one on there. Being so close to the pivot point, it will restore quite a bit of the steering lock, but it's still not great. The other thing to try is a wafer head screw. I've not got any at the moment, but if the head's a big enough diameter, it might just replace the washer entirely. And potentially we could grind the head down even more where it comes in contact with the C-hub. For the time being though, the smaller lock's going to have to do. We can refit the wheels with their flange nuts, and we can pop the body on. Now, surprisingly, at least in this light, they don't really stand out all that much. I was expecting them to be big brass beacons under there. They look surprisingly subtle. I was considering blacking them out, but as long as they're not super loud when out in the sun, I'll just leave them as they are. Okay, and now for a quick test. Here we have my dad's TRX4. It's completely stock, running a 2S LiPo. Getting up the hill, he's being fairly careful, having to watch out for the front wheels catching and the truck going into a wheelie. The surface is very loose, so most of the time it just gets wheel spin. On a grippier hill, I think we'd be seeing a lot more wheelies when the front hits tree roots. My truck, however, with all the extra weight, doesn't really get tipped at all when hitting the roots. Even bouncing doesn't seem to cause any extreme reactions. It would be nice to take it to the steep hill at Bowdown Woods that you saw in a video or two ago. The ground had a lot less leaves on it, and I'm pretty sure it gets washed with rainwater every so often, so it's going to be a lot grippier. So this would be the end of the video, but I've got some new wheels too, which won't really fill a video on their own. So here we have a set of AU Star Swampers on aluminium beadlock wheels. They're 60 quid from a UK seller on eBay. Here's his card with an RCD90 as the main image. I'm pretty sure he's an enthusiast rather than just a box shifter. He also sent this rather nice little pin badge with his company name on the back. It's a bit small to read though. Now, I've come across these tyres from a couple of Chinese sellers, usually around 20 quid a pair. After adding some wheels too, they end up costing more than these ones, so I think they're pretty good value. The finish on the wheels is rather nice, looks like they painted them black, then the face is machined to reveal the bare metal. Unlike beadlocks with rock rings, these ones only have screws around the centre, so there's going to be plenty of clearance for the portal hubs on the TRX4. The tyres, I think, are copies of a Proline tyre but they feel just fine, the rubber's nice and soft, although the foam might be a little bit on the stiff side. Compared to the stock tyres, they're a little smaller diameter and quite a bit thinner. The main difference though is the tread pattern. There's a much larger gap between the edge blocks. I'm thinking they might just catch on tree roots where the stock ones don't. Fitted to the TRX4, they do look a little bit on the small side. I think it's mainly the narrower width that's doing it, as the diameter is almost the same. Grip-wise on a loose surface, there's not really much in it. They're still spinning quite freely in the loose dirt, but that's not too surprising. I'm not sure if they're going to stay on the TRX4 or move on to a different truck. They seem to be perfectly good tyres and wheels. They just look a little bit small on the Traxxas. And that would be it for this week, but I've just got some fancy screws to replace the short ones holding the bearings in the hubs. They're M2.5 by 3mm wafer heads called so because the heads are wafer thin I guess. The diameter is a little bit more than the Traxxas dome heads and it's just enough to keep the bearings in. 
and because they're nice and thin, they're not really going to limit the steering lock. I'll stick a link in the description to the eBay listing. Anyway, that really is it for this week, so as always, thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you've got something to say, leave a comment. Bye guys! Thank you.